They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and art is no different. From sketches to pinups to everything in between, this is Behind the Art. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome to this new video. Um, this is a behind uh, the art uh, look at one of my earliest fan art pieces that I did. And um, fan art pieces for indie comics. Uh, I've been doing fan art for a long, long time. And I think everything I've ever done was fan art. But um, but no, in the year uh, 2020, like two years ago, I started. I decided that I'd like to do some more fan art, but more focused on indie characters. And... Um, and I've done a lot uh, in the last two years. And one of the first ones that I did was this. Uh, this is a piece um, for my good friend. Uh, um, we, uh, his, we call him Marv. Uh, his name is, uh, I don't know if he likes if I share his name. But yeah, we call him Marv. And uh, he's the creator of the comic, uh, The Sin Killer. And he's currently working in his uh, second uh, comic. And... Uh, that, that's going to be out um, quite soon. Uh, this is uh, artwork that I did for the second comic. For the first comic, I'm sorry. And uh, hopefully I can do some more later down the road. But um, but yeah, this is one of my earliest uh, pieces. And as you can see here, I have um, this character that's uh, on his knee. And right here on the grave. Um, someone's grave, I don't know who. Next to his two friends. These are two characters that are also in the comic. His name is Gabriel and Michael, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, and yeah, so, um, yeah, just a, a little story to, to, to this uh, piece. This took me a while to do, um, because of, um, uh, one, I, uh, remember I came back into drawing in the year 2018, 2019. And so this is like roughly like about a year after I had started taking back drawing again. So there was many things that I was having doubts with many things that I was having problems with. And at that time, um, me being a perfectionist, like when I was doing the drawing or any drawing at that time, if I made the slightest mistake, I would completely throw away the drawing and then start all over again. Um, and this is not, and this is also the case with this drawing. This is actually, this piece, this drawing here is actually the third one that I did. Um, and I was having problems at the time with, uh, the hand and the face. There was a particular facial expression I was trying to get. I think I got it for the most part with this one, but I, but there was another piece, uh, one of the earlier ones, um, that I really, really liked how it came out, but the hand, uh, just didn't come, just didn't, uh, come out exactly as I liked it. So I, I discarded it, I got rid of it and I went in and I tried it again and again and again. <clears throat> yeah. So this is actually the third one. So, um, I've been work. I worked on this for like a few weeks actually, um, I said, like I'm talking about, I'm referring to like the whole fan art process of doing this fan art for this this because I, I did two pieces before this one, and I threw away both of them because there was something that I didn't like, and um, and yeah, so this is the, the the piece that this is the final piece that and I was able to to get finished. I was I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I'm also incredibly happy that this ended up in the book. Also, um, you'll see this in the um, in the back in the inside back cover of Singular Number One. And, um, and yeah, so yeah, uh, I look back at this piece now, and there's a lot of things that I appreciate about it. A lot of things that um, that uh, that I learned, and um, and yeah, just some of those things. You know, uh, for example, here, you, as you could, if you look at this piece, my uh, rendering is not the same back then as it is now. Um, you could, we can, make, I can make the argument that it was better back then, or I can make the argument that it's better now. But um, but yeah, rendering is uh, my rendering here was different. Um, one thing I don't know if this if this effect came out or not, but this suit, this this character, he's wearing uh one of those uh, white transparent suits that people use for cleaning up. So um, so you we are led to believe that he's just finished you know digging someone's grave, and so he doesn't want to have anybody you know any evidence or things like that on on his person. So he's using this kind of um, he's using this kind of clothing you no know, so uh, when i when i drew that when i had that idea in mind i was like how can i render this without making it overly heavy heavy black or light heavy black and try to give you that that still white uh, soft fabric feel to it so i went with a very delicate 
uh, rendering of, I guess you could say that. And I used, um, I think, an 05 or an 01, or maybe an 02, I'm not sure. Um, and I did this uh, this rendering here. And you can see I have one pattern going this way and then the other pattern going slightly at an angle. So there's two patterns essentially all over this. I think I overdid it. I think you could just pretty tell that I overdid it. But it looks good. Like, you know, I'm looking back at you know, zooming out a little bit. It looks good. You can see it more evidently here. You know how I go up. I go up this way and then I go to the side a little bit inclined. And I do that all throughout this piece here. A little bit of hatching there the same effect here now for this one this area here right behind his arm right behind his hand um i, I went a third layer and so i went up i went to the side and i went to the other side with it no and i went and i did that according to where i think and i might need a little bit of darker areas and lighter areas here for example on the arm again i go up and then i go to the side sorry go up and i go to the side here and they're trying to respect the light source a little bit. Um, just looking at this drawing from the light source, I would say would be here, top left, and it's shining down that way. So um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I could probably darken this area a little bit more, put cast shadow here. Um, but yeah, it's mean things that you learn. Huh? And um, there's the shadow that corresponds to that. And and yeah, so, I mean, some things. Uh, um, I guess this would probably be the best way to render this. I don't know how else would you render this kind of fabric, but 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 yeah, it looks good. I like it. I like what I did here. Also, something that noted that I note could notice immediately is the contour lines. You know, you have the contour lines here. I was um, still I was still at this time uh, experimenting with uh, line weights and and just uh, whether or not if I should do this kind of contour on everything. And because uh, for example, this animal here has a little bit. Uh, but um, Gabriel doesn't have it that much. The tree has it. And so, yeah, I'm messing around with the contour lines. Here I went heavy. For the shovel, I went heavy into the hatching. And I'm going in different directions, trying to give it a darker look. So it could look different from this fabric, look different from the animal, look different from the grass. Also, I went in with uh, with this. Um, yeah, I feel, I look at it now, I feel like maybe I lose the effect of the of the bands you know, by by just doing solid contour on each side so who knows um but yeah this is uh this is the piece and then this is uh the the doberman i don't know if it looks like a doberman maybe you might not see a doberman at all but i was thinking like just leaving this and then maybe focusing on the colors if someone were to color this probably could be a little bit more a little bit more um more obvious as a doberman than, than what i have here and if you zoom in you can see where I white it out because I was doing this kind of effect on this side to see how they look and I didn't like how it looked. I think I was going for something like this under this bottom part of his lip on this side and I just didn't like how it looked so I was like man I need to get rid of that and then and just white it all out and I hate doing white out. Yeah so I also um I like this I like how I did this this hatching similar thing that I did on the shovel I did it here and then also I did this effect here uh, making it from uh, dark to light. You no, know, and I did that, and I like how I did it on some areas because I was able, I was able to give like a little light source on the lip here on this area, give a little bit more um, texture. Uh, I, I had to just ever so lightly with the uh, with the pen, ever so lightly, because if I did it too dark, it'd come out like a darker, a darker um, ink on it. So yeah. Yeah, it's good, and this is like probably like the the creme de la creme, I guess, of the of the details that I, of the details that I did here, because I, I was I wanted to do a like the forest background, and I didn't want to just and I didn't want to just end up doing a bunch of like circle circ curves curves like oh I don't know how you call it like that you know, like your regular trees has got like curves and curves and curves and curves, I didn't want to do that I wanted to do something that looked a little bit different a little bit more realistic I guess you could say, and so um eh, what I ended up doing is I got a um, a brush pen and I did these lines going all the way up different the thickness in that case you no know, someone some lines are thicker some lines are thinner and then with that same brush pen I just did stippling I think it's called I don't know if stippling is the name but I did stippling and I did all over the paper 
and it took forever. It took forever to get to stud to get this done, and I did it. And I was kept on going at it. Once I finished like a layer of it, I would like take a step back, take a look at it, and then I'd see, okay, I needed to get a little bit darker here, a little bit darker here, a little bit darker here, and I'd go back over it again, a layer, a layer, a layer, and just keep working at it, working at it, working at it until I got it just about right. Um, also, also to the point where it looks like like trees. I think I did it for, did it pretty well for the most part. Um, well, you can, one can always improve, but I think I did it pretty good. I used the same effect again later, and we'll look at it also later in another uh, behind the art. I did the same effect for um, my uh, Ash um, versus Evil Dead drawing. So we'll take a look at that uh, some other day. But um, but yeah, so this is the the piece that I did uh, for Marv. And um really happy I was able to do some artwork for Marv because Marv has been like one of the biggest supporters of mine. Like from the very beginning that I that I got on Twitter. From my some of, from some of the the very earliest drawings that that sucked balls, <laughs> I look at it back now like it really sucked. But um, even back then in those drawings, like uh, Mar was like, "Yeah, it looks great. You should uh, do a good. You know, you're doing a good job. Keep at it." And he would always push this idea also of like, "Stop doing fan art for Marvel and DC. Work on your own stuff." Um, and he he continues preaching that uh, today. You know, continues preaching that stop doing artwork for Marvel. Do your own stuff and uh, make out make your own comic. <clears throat> and, um, and yeah, when I first got on Twitter, I was like, yeah, everybody's comedy, yeah, yeah, whatever. Everybody's everybody's saying make your own stuff, make your own stuff, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But um, but no, it, it, but Marv was also doing his thing, and then um, and then he actually made this comic, and then he featured my artwork in this book, and I was real I was like, oh man, this guy's all about it. You no, know, he he um he does what he preaches. You no, know, he he uh. He made his, created his characters, and here they are. He made his comic. Uh, he's already into issue number two, and uh, and yeah, he's still pro, uh, he's still uh, supporting me very much, and he's still uh, encouraging me to um, to get my book out. And I'm and I'm actually now taking like you know more serious steps into like actually making my book. So I'm always uh, happy to give uh, Marv a shout out, and always happy to uh, support him and then put eyes on his project. And because um, yeah, he's just a really positive guy and. Uh, and yeah, so if you can check out Sin Killer, um, eh, I'm not sure if it's in the man or not. I haven't, I haven't, che I haven't checked this page in a while. But um, the last that I had him, I had him on my on the channel. I had him on the channel a few weeks ago uh, during a draw stream, and he was talking about his book. I'll be sure to have him back on again, um, so we can give us an update. Um, but yeah, eh, I'll, I'll take a look. I'll put uh, the links in the description below, so you can check out his artwork, check out his uh, book. And um, and yeah, so it's just uh, it was really great, great to uh, create. It was really great uh, to be able to uh, contribute to to this to Mars um, to Mars uh, comic and his characters. And yeah, this was the beginning of a long line of uh, fan art pieces that I would do for other people. You know, with the idea of promoting their, uh, their projects, with also giving me an opportunity to continue work, working on my craft. You know, because. Um, uh, what better than to like? I want to practice drawing, you know. So I practice drawing and I draw a bunch of characters. I usually draw Marvel characters, but you know, shining light on characters that already exist that are going nowhere because you know they exist and they're being destroyed right now. I'd rather put that effort into drawing and practicing and then drawing characters that are in the indie comic scene and then shining light on characters that that you probably don't hurt, don't don't, don't even know what don't even know about and. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. You know, I, I I get to practice, they get more eyes on their projects, and um, and in some cases, like the, the artwork ends up in the book, so it's, it works out for everybody. So um, so yeah, so this led to a long line of uh, fan art pieces, and uh, we're going to uh, take a look at most of them, if not all of them, and um, and yeah, so just be uh, on the lookout um, for Marv and the Sin Killer. And yeah, this was done. Right here, June eleventh, twenty twenty. It's a one of one. And what else can I say about about this piece? Here? I did the stippling here. Here the grass. Did the same grass effect, but nothing too drastic. And the hot cross cross hatching here. Yeah, good stuff. And yeah, so yeah, that, that's that's about it. Um, I'll be sure to uh, leave all of the the links for Marv and his projects in the description below. Yeah, so please also uh, like and uh, share the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm one person away from 200. 
And, um, and yeah, so obviously, me, my goal is to get to a thousand, uh, unless I can get monetized and, do like, and things like that, and I'll do that whole thing. But also, um, if I can get to 500, I'll be able to like post some of the artwork that I work on you know, on YouTube um, through that community tab uh, option. Uh, so that opens up at 500 subscribers. So, so yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I'll slowly, hopefully, I'll, I'll end, up, I'll get this. That's, that's one of the targets, also. So, um, yeah, so please uh, like, like the video, share it out, and, uh, subscribe, and uh, tell all your friends about me. <laughs> tell all your, all your buddies about me, and um, and yeah, so this has been uh, the piece, uh, the the fan art that I did for Marv on the comic, the Sin Killer. He is the Sin Killer. His name, uh, I didn't mention it earlier. His name is John Paris. That's Gabriel, and that's Michael. Um. It's really cool characters, and that's it. So thank you very much. Have a have a great day. I'll see, catch you in the next video. Take care.